Welcome to lesson six in a C sharp from start to finish course. My name is Tim Corey and today we're going to create our class library. So far we've been stuck in planning mode and I say stuck because that's how I always feel. That first thing I want to do is start writing code. And as I've stressed, planning is important and it needs to be done before we start coding. But now that we're through our initial planning, we get to actually start by opening Visual Studio today. And today we're going to look at creating our class library based upon what we've already laid out. So let's jump right in. Before we get started in this lesson, I want to take a quick minute to help you out. If you're anything like me, you probably have a friend or relative who thinks that because you do something with computers, you must know how to fix their computer. I don't know how many computers I've fixed over the years. So I decided to come up with a better solution. So I built a course that teaches anyone how to properly maintain their own computer. I call it PC maintenance for the rest of us. And it costs just $29. I show people how to download free software to protect their computer, including an antivirus, a malware scanner, and online file storage applications. Then I show them how to use each one as well as how to maintain their computer after it's cleaned up. So how does this help you? Well, what I do now is I tell people they have to buy this course, watch it, and do what it says before I'll work on their computers. That solves most of their problems both now and in the future. And they can do the same for you. You will find the link for this course on IamTimCorey.com as well as in the description below. Do what I do, and you will not only be helping me out, you'll be helping yourself out as well. Okay, let's get back to the lesson. Here we are inside Visual Studio. If we're going to create a new project. We'll select Class Library. We'll name this Tracker Library, and I call it Library at the end to make sure that I know that this is a class library. I'll go ahead and set the location to the location I specified. And the solution name we will call Tournament Tracker. I'll hit OK. And the first thing I do is I open up Solution Explorer and delete class one. And the reason I do that is because I don't want anything named the default, like one at the end. So instead of trying to rename that and possibly having an issue, I just go ahead and delete that. So now we have our library set up and it's ready for our classes. But what classes do we put in here? And this is a great part about having done the planning process already. We're really not thinking at this point. Instead, what we're doing is we're just retyping what we have in our planning document into actual code. Now, we still are thinking. It's just that our thought process is maybe a little bit different. Instead of thinking, what data do I need? We're now thinking, is that the right name to call it? Is, am I missing anything? Those type of things. And so it really speeds up the process. So I've got a printed out list of my classes and the properties in them. And so I'll go ahead and start creating those. If you have the companion guide, this is a great time to open that up and go to that page because it really helps you follow along. If not, you can reference the previous videos to see the design for our class layout and compare that to what we're doing right now. Or if you're really organized and had been taking notes, refer back to those. So let's start by adding a new class and we'll call this team model. We can just call it team if you wanted to, but a standard is to put model at the end of it, just so we know this is a data model or it captures data. It does really differentiate this type of object from anything else. So let's go ahead and just put model at the end of every one of our classes. So team model, we'll make it public. And we'll type prop, P-R-O-P. And this is my snippet that I use. It's built into Visual Studio. And this snippet, what it does is you type prop and tab twice, it creates an auto property. And this auto property is the type of thing where I use quite a bit in our classes. This holds one piece of data. So in this case, right now it's an int type and it's called my property. Of course, we'll change that. We can change that by saying a list of person and we'll, I tab, I can say team members. I hit enter, it goes to the end of the line. Now, we don't have a person class yet. We'll get to that. So for right now, it's a red squiggly, that's okay. 
Next, I'll type prop string team name. So now I have two properties. First is a list of person and next is a string. And that is all I needed for the team class. Before I continue, the one thing I want to do as well is initialize this team members property. By default, this will be an uninitialized list. And I want to make sure that the very first thing that happens is we initialize it. So what I can do is at the end of the property, say equals new list of person. And this is something new in C Sharp 6.0. It used to be we couldn't do this here. And so instead what we do is we create a constructor, CTOR, tab twice, and then say team members equals new list of person. And that's in the constructor. And so anytime this class is instantiated, it call this in, and it would instantiate the team members property. But since C sharp six, we can now just say the auto property equals new list of person. Again, that's yelling at me for the person because it's not yet created. No worries, we'll get there next. So let's go ahead and right click on the tracker library and say add class. And this is the person model. It's a public class person model. I say prop tab twice string first name prop tab twice string last name. email address, cell phone number, and that's it. So now we have a person model. Notice how quick that went. And I intentionally didn't really talk through the whole thing. I just want to go through it because we've already talked through it initially in our planning step. And now I'm just putting this stuff down into actual code. And the one thing we need to address is back over here in team model, we call this person and she person model. I'm going to change this as well. So now we have no more red squigglies. The team model is has team members, which is a list of person model. And the person model has our four properties. And that's all for that. Let's add another class. Now we add our tournament model. We make it public. We're going to add our string tournament name, our decimal entry fee, our list of team model. Entered teams. Our list of prize model called prizes. Our list of a list of matchup model called rounds. And again, we will initialize these two, these three lists. So equals new list of team model equals new. And notice how it, when I say new space, I kind of glossed over it before, but it already knows list of prize model. And so therefore I say new and it says right here, list of prize model. So I can say tab and it fills it in for me, even though right now prize model is not yet a created model. And so it's yelling at me, but at the same time it's saying, you probably want this to be a new list of prize model. So it allows it. Even for that more complicated list of a list of matchup model, it allows it. Now let's continue on and create these other models. Add class prize model, make it public. int place number p 
place name. Prize amount. And prize percentage. Now leave those all to their initial values. Now if you come back over here to our tournament model, we can see that prize model is now working correctly. So we can add our next class, which is the matchup model. We can make it public. Prop tab twice. A list of matchup entry model entries. And I'll even say right now equals new list. Team model winner. Int matchup round. All right, and the last one I have to do is I have to add a new class for matchup entry model. Make it public. Team competing. Score. And parent matchup. And guess what? That completes the basics of our class library. You seem to get right down to it. The class library, once it's planned out, is very, very simple to actually build. But before we go, there is one other thing that I want to point out that we really should do. I'm going to start doing it, but I want to show you the whole thing just because it is a little bit long and tedious. And that is we need to comment this. And I know that's not one of those steps kind of like planning that you're like, man, I really don't want to do that or I'll get to it later. And here's the reality. If you don't do it now, you won't get to it. But I'm not asking you to comment this in general. Instead, what I'm asking for is XML comments. And if you've never used an XML comment before, they're really easy to use and they're really, really useful. So for example, above this property right here, if I type three slashes in a row, one, two, three, it gives me this little bit of XML. And it says summary, and it's a blank line, and then it has the slash summary. If you're familiar with XML or HTML or things of this nature, this right here is an opening tag and this is a closing tag. Inside here is where you put your actual comment. In this case, I might say represents one team in the matchup. And then come down here and again over the score represents the score for this particular team. And then our matchup model, I would say represents the matchup that this team came from as the winner. Now that might be a little long, and so I could actually right here hit the enter key and put it on next, the next line. And notice how it added those triple slash comments and then moved one space over and then started my text. So this is called an XML comment. Now it may just look like a kind of a cool way of formatting or maybe not cool way of formatting your comments, but there's so much more to this. Let me do a quick constructor here to show you what I mean. Let's say I create a constructor where you have to pass in a double called score or maybe initial score. Why you do this, not really important. Instead, what's important is this actual method 
if I hit triple slash comments here, I get that summary, but I also get this other line saying, here is the initial score parameter. So not only can I document the method itself, but also inside here, and this is where people get some things mixed up a little bit, it's inside like this. And so it's between this greater than sign and this less than sign, not in here somewhere not in here, but you document right there. So not only can I document the method, but also the parameter. And in fact, if this was a method and it had a return type, we could also document that. And if you notice, if you open up your less than sign, I can have examples or which exceptions get returned or what permissions are needed for this method. Remarks, see also, I can document a whole lot of other things. But again, you may say, who really cares? Or why should I use this format? Well, let's look at, if we had CW tab tab. Again, console right line, not really pertinent in this location, but pretend that it is. If I look at this right now, I see that it says it writes the current line terminator to the standard output stream. How does that method pass this information along? Well, it's by these triple slash comments. That phrase right there writes the current line terminator to the standard output stream. That phrase comes from the summary statement. Now, if I were to go down one level, say to this where it says bool value, notice it says value is the value to write. Where does that come from? Well, that comes from the parameter documentation for this item. Again, triple slash comments. And that's what Microsoft does, but we can do as well if we use these same triple slash comments. So if someone is calling this class library, instead of just seeing team competing, which may be descriptive, but this is definitely descriptive, or it should be, in telling you exactly what that is all about. We could even give an example of how to use a certain method, or even say who has access to a certain method or a certain property. So all of these things can be done using our triple slash comments. My encouragement to you is definitely use these. So I'll go back through and add the triple slash comments on the other properties in the rest of these models but you don't need to watch that. Instead, let's talk about what's coming up next. In our next lesson, we're gonna start building our forms. Now remember, we've already designed our forms in our planning phase, and now we're gonna take those designs and create actual forms. And the first thing you may be thinking is, those forms were ugly. And yeah, they were. They were designs that were just for kind of sketching things out. Now we're gonna try and add a little life to these forms, make them a little less like standard battleship gray forms and give them a little bit of a modern feel. So make sure you stick around for that. Before you go, you'll see a link on the left to buy this course. Check out the intro video on this playlist for more information about what you get if you pay. Also, if you are ever wondering what you could do to help this channel out without paying money, I've listed six things that really help. I'd appreciate if you considered doing one or more of these. Thanks again, and don't forget to keep practicing what you learned.